Well, good morning. Today, I'd just like to uh, read a little something I wrote about uh, Nietzsche's influence on theology. As well as, as I've said many times before, I believe that Nietzsche's work could be used as one of the greatest self-help um, philosophies uh, that we've had in, in the current eon. So here is Tracing Modern Psychology Back to Nietzsche. How we can still be guided by him today. So welcome to today's talk, where we'll take a step back from the usual filters of psychological thought and look directly to the source, Friedrich Nietzsche, Fritz, as I like to call him. For decades, we've been introduced to Freud, Jung, Alder, Frankel, and countless others as titans of modern psychology, each offering their own breakthrough ideas. But today, I want to argue that these ideas aren't so much breakthroughs as they are echoes, echoes of Nietzsche's prophetic insights. What if instead of taking these ideas through the lens of others, we sought to individuate their theories? We engaged deeply with Nietzsche himself. I believe by doing so, we can bypass the filters and meet our own needs in a raw, direct, and transformative way. Let's start with Freud. Freud famously avoided direct association with Nietzsche, claiming he had little exposure to his works. But if we look deeper, we find Nietzsche's fingerprints all over Freud's theory of the drives. Freud's concept of the id, the primal, irrational force within us all, is essentially a psychological framing of Nietzsche's will to power. Nietzsche understood that our most basic drive is not towards pleasure or survival, but towards power. The power to define ourselves, to overcome, to create meaning. This drive pulses beneath everything we do. Freud may have framed this in terms of pleasure-seeking and repression, but Nietzsche had already laid the groundwork. Jung is another thinker who cannot escape Nietzsche's influence. And at least he admitted it. In Jung's Red Book, he goes so far as to acknowledge Nietzsche's role in shaping his concept of the shadow, the parts of ourselves we repress and deny. Jung even points to Nietzsche's ability to internalize cultural myths and bring them to the forefront of human consciousness. Nietzsche saw clearly that humans are not driven by logic alone, but by deep, often unconscious forces. This is Jung's shadow, made explicit in Nietzsche's call to become who you are, a direct confrontation with the parts of ourselves we hide or refuse to acknowledge. But here's where it gets more interesting. Viktor Frankl, the founder of Logotherapy, and Alfred Adler, Adler pardon me, the father of individual psychology, both borrow heavily from Nietzsche. Frankl's idea that meaning comes through suffering, pure Nietzsche, amor fate, the love of fate, is it's one of Nietzsche's most powerful concepts. The idea that to truly live, we must embrace every aspect of life, including its pain. Frankl's insistence that suffering can provide meaning mirrors Nietzsche's belief that hardship is necessary for growth. Adler's focus on overcoming inferiority and striving for superiority, this is nothing but Nietzsche's will to power in psychological form. Self-overcoming, moving beyond our limitations, divining ourselves not in comparison to others, but through our own will. But here's the key insight. Nietzsche's ideas get filtered through each of these thinkers' framework. Remember what Jung said, reading another uh, therapist's uh, book on his therapy or their therapy, you'll learn more about the therapist than you will about the therapy. Right? These deluding influences and reframing to fit their individual systems. Freud needed to differentiate himself, so he claimed ignorance of Nietzsche. He also claimed ignorance that his talking therapy was taken almost directly from Brewer's, uh, his mentor, Brewer, Brower, Brewer, Brewer, Brower, the doctor that he worked under. It's taken directly from his one patient who used to heal after a psych psychic neurotic episode. I don't know how you'd want to call it. She would heal herself by talking herself through it. And well, here we are, right? Jung wanted to build his own mythological system. So he embraced Nietzsche in parts, but distanced himself where necessary or where he felt necessary. Frankel and Adler did the same. 
taking only what fit their frameworks. Why does this matter? Because in doing so, these thinkers distance themselves from Nietzsche's original thoughts and insights. The unfiltered Nietzsche, who speaks directly to the human condition, I argue that today we don't need to go through these filters. We can engage with Nietzsche directly and let his aphorisms guide us unmediated by Freud's psychoanalyst, psychoanalysis or Jung's collective unconscious. This is why Nietzsche is more relevant now than ever. When we confront him head on without the need to fit his ideas into someone else's system, we find that we can speak directly to ourselves. Nietzsche understood the complexities of human existence, our drives, our fears, our desires for meaning, and he did so without the pretense of needing to label or categorize. By engaging with Nietzsche himself, we stop looking for authority figures to tell us how to think and start thinking for ourselves. In a world where the lines between neurotypical and neurodiverse are drawn with increasing rigidity. Yeah, I was just making it sounded like I was on the wrong page. In a world where the lines between neurotypical and neurodiverse are drawn with increasing rigidity, where we're constantly told we learn this way or that way, Nietzsche reminds us that we are all engaged in a process of self-overcoming, of becoming. We are all atypical in our own way, and it is precisely this atypicality that gives us the power to define who we are. I can't believe I put that in. I was just writing about my theory of atypical uh, learning, and I guess I dropped it in here and didn't even remember. So instead of continuing to look through the filter of others' interpretation of Nietzsche, I invite you to engage with Fritz directly. Let him be your guide. Not Freud, not Jung, not Alder, but Nietzsche. Through him, you'll find the tools to meet your own needs, to overcome your own struggles, and to create a life that is truly yours.